guys. So this is from 4:17:24, uh, 12:08 at night. Um, it's what is coming, and man's plans march forward is the first one, and open the doors is the second one. I'm gonna apologize right now for the like motor running and air sound. It is just like 91 degrees and really warm. So I need a little air. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So number one, man's plans march forward. The Lord God Almighty allows for man's plans to march forward. The events, once they occur, will pick up to a furious pace. Only those in me will be at peace. Those who love money or things will be challenged first. Those who listen to man over me will be challenged after this. Those who trust country will be let down next. The church will be tested who actually has faith in me in the small and large things and who believes they are the makers of their own success. Those trusting self will be challenged. Those trusting me will be safe and secure. Man will be tested if they are pure of heart or if they are carnal and evil. Will they kill their brother in their land or will they join with those who do? Or will they trust me to keep them safe like David? Some who are haughty towards me will be picked up from your country and taken to a faraway land and be treated as slaves. Will those trust in me with their hopelessness or will they trust in themselves? Many strange sights in the sky will occur. This will trigger some to spiral into confusion. This will trigger others to faith. Those who are filled with pride and carnality will not turn to me no matter the events. Those who love me and value my word and have faith in me, they will not fear as the world falls apart around them. Sights never seen will occur and so will miracles never seen. The choice will be plain for all to see and for all to make. None on the earth will be tricked into following the false one. Each will see amazing sights, both negative and positive, and be pushed to make a choice. Do they really have full faith in me or not? Each turning point will be significant. Each turning point more will choose me. But some who call themselves mine, when pushed to the choosing point, will show their true colors that they trust man over me. Their physical losses, their fears, their perceptions will show who they are. They are false. They are posers. They are in a club because of the benefits not having actual faith. Why would I allow these things to occur before rapture? So many actual faithful are exhausted and so ready to go home. Why do they have to be here to see all of this? They wonder. First, Many of those who wish to be raptured because they are so tired and so filled with impatience are actually the ones with no faith. Without a job or without a home or without their comforts, the first thing they will do is show their colors and run to man to cure their problems. They will not pray and have actual faith that I will sustain them. So part of why is to sort the wheat from the chaff. But another significant reason is that so many will need to know how to find me as the world breaks down and as things become impossibly different than they are now. Those being sustained by me serve both as an example and as my hands and feet to bring the gospel to save others. The church has not been disciplined in your generation. It has strayed far from the course. The church in its current state is not the example and place to come to faith. It is sick and in need of healing. But after many are brought low, the church will spring to life with joy, service, sharing, miracles, kindness, hospitality, the sharing of the Holy Scriptures, the taking of communion, baptisms will abound. My gospel will go forth in every land on the earth. The church will be doing as it was purposed. This will bring even more. Trust me, the ride is about to get bumpy and difficult. Turn to me and be carried through. Do not be found without faith when I send my son to collect the church. 
Be of full faith doing my business. Have hope. Find your rest in me. I am the Lord God Almighty and I cannot lie. So the verse is Proverbs 3, 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song I will praise him. Psalm 91, 1 to 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Number two, open the doors. Open the doors. Bring all of the people. The season of grace is winding down. As the world falls apart, bring everyone I lead to you. Give them the truth and the way to get through the open doors. Be bold for me. There are none who are too far gone. There are some who do not want grace and they do not want Christ, but most do. They will know as the things of this world are altered, life isn't the same and awakening. Be aware, be observant to who is open to it and tell them as much as they can swallow. Give them the actual gospel. Don't be shy. People are curious. They only have bits and pieces. Just tell them about Jesus and salvation through him. Bring them to my feet. Teach them to be respectful, but also to be open and honest. Encourage them to repent and accept Jesus as their savior. Let them know they need to have full faith. Encourage them to be baptized. Give them a Bible. Invite them to learn the Bible with you. You have so much to give just by already knowing me. Share my love, joy, and hope. Be my examples of how the church should look. Be my vessels. Rejoice for you are a child of the Most High God. Rejoice for you are saved. Rejoice for you are being used in the King's service. Rejoice and spread my joy. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Romans 3, 23 and 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Acts 2.38, then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, then I got this on 122.23, which is sort of related, okay? The title is Kindness or Carnal. The church in their pain will react just like some you know. They will reach out for everything but me, especially alcohol, drugs, doctors, and comfort food. They also like to hide from me. They hide with constant noise, for silence is how I am found and can be heard. They drown me out with the business of music, movies, podcasts, and incessant talking. You have seen this much with some family members. Some have lived a very noisy life and left no room to hear me. This will soon change for when the power goes out, and soon it will, it will be silence for all. Yes, mine will have power, but the services they used to use to drown me out will not. They will be cut at the source. I will speak to mine at this time. Some will hear. At this time, a family member will hear. She has spent decades in my word, but still knows little. This is because she doesn't listen. This is true for most of the church. They function as this person does, addicted to noise and even nice activities at church, but they have no time to hear. Their hearts love me, but they cannot hear me. You know I have tried to reach these people with dreams, but they cannot see the spiritual connections and they explain their dreams away by the rationale. It saddens me how many are not prepared to go because they do not listen. Why do they ignore me? because they do not want to change. They want the benefits of Christianity, not the disciplines. 
they are selfish and carnal and they do not want to give up the carnal. Why are they carnal? Some are because of what other people think. They value other people's opinions over mine. This is like your family member. Some like the carnal or the memories of the carnal process that the carnal behaviors offer. Some can't fathom life any other way. Some, the few efforts they have made at reading my word or worshiping or even being led by the Holy Spirit were awkward to the life that they knew before. The awkwardness and the disinterest in the change triggers them to revert back to their old life. Some, those with habits, when they try to stop the lack of having whatever it is they habitually used, instead of filling it with me or picking up my word to overcome, they revert to their old ways. For those that enjoy the sensations of the carnal, this typically goes with those who were in the sins of alcohol, drugs, sexual sins, high risk activities like theft, and for some, food. They're used to chasing after these or used to using them to cope. They don't give their struggles to me. They just look for other things to fill the need. For those who continually manipulate or crave power over others like that of the kings, they have never given me authority over their lives. They are the kings of their lives and they think no one is higher than they in their soul. Uh, they may say they love me, but it is a perception they have for appearances. I know the heart. For those that lack devotion fall into idol worship. These do not read my words. They crave experiences, not the true me. Experiences only lead to idols because the fake idols have demons that mimic stimulating experiences that they are told are of me. If they would have read the word, they would know. All you see in this are essentially illiterates. They only read my words that make them happy. They have never read my entire story. Every carnal act is easily broken when people have faith in me fully. The chains break with one round of communion and asking me for the power to overcome the trouble. This is not spoken of in the church. I will train you perfectly, meaning me, and you will bring truth to the church. You will have perfect recall. They will mature quickly because of your willingness to listen and obey. So that's more information on the same topic, and I hope you find that useful, helpful, encouraging, motivational, whatever position you're in, and I'll see you next time.